I gotta ask, because when we were sitting in, in the room and we were looking at some of the storyboards, like, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a really, uh, it's kind of a sad image of a man holding up a, a house with balloons on it. And, and I don't know, the, to me that was a really good, like, I, you know, can, maybe you can kind of expand on that image or maybe what, what, what started the whole Up kind of experience for you. Well, Up was kind of, actually, we, we, the very first drawing, I think, that I would probably trace the development was this grouchy, he was sort of green looking, this guy, mm -hmm. really sour, holding these happy, fine, colorful balloons and just the juxtaposition of that seemed really fun. And we started playing with that, and then the idea of escaping and floating away in a house. Why not? He ties his balloons to the house. And, and, um, and then we kind of thought backwards from there, thinking, well, what led to this? You know, why would he be led to escape the world? And uh, it just seemed like tragedy was a, a powerful thing and something unfilled, you know, some dream that he has yet to achieve. It's extremely brave, actually, to have a backstory that that kind of goes right into it, which really breaks everybody's heart. So I'm just wondering, was there at any point a, like trepidation to kind of go there, or was there, you know, like maybe we should hold back on this story a little bit? Or? No, not at all. We knew we had a lot of comedy, a lot of wacky stuff, and a lot of action and adventure. And for me, when I watch movies that only have those elements, uh, they kind of leave your head very quickly. And so we wanted enough grounding. And to me, that's the, you know, the relatability and the, the emotion is what makes you connect with that character and care as he's going through all the wacky, goofy action stuff. You know, you stay with it because you want what he wants. As usual, Pixar kind of comes up with really great characters that people are going to fall in love with, Russell being one of them. Oh, I might be a little bit, have, you know, I might have allegiance because I'm going to look like him. But yeah. maybe talk about, like, the, this kind of Russell character and how, you know, who, where, where did he stem from? And Well, we kind of designed him to compliment Carl, really. So we had this grouchy guy who is, you know, it's a little bit like the Rick from Casablanca kind of story, a reincarnation story. He's walking dead kind of at the beginning, and at the end he's reconnecting with the world. And... Russell seemed like a good character to pull him out of his house, you know. He's not going to go willingly. It's going to have to be a struggle. And so that's where all the characters came from, was just trying to find ways of pushing Carl out of his comfort zone, you know. And Russell was, he was designed specifically to be, uh, uh, we, we patterned him largely on this guy, Pete Sohn, who is one of the top story guys here, and a uh, really fun, entertaining guy. He did the short film at the beginning. And, uh, you know, he's just such a great personality that I thought, well, let's shrink him down to eight years old and see what happens, you know. Bringing everybody to South America, I mean, was that, was that always in the cards? Did it take a while for you to go, like, you know, maybe this is the best place to... Well, we had played with a couple different locations before we arrived at the mountain, the range, the, the Tapuis. And so we just lived with it for a while. And once it became certain that that's what, where, where we were going to set the film, we knew we had to go there because it's such a weird, fantastic otherworldly place that if we just pulled it out of our heads, it would, I don't think it would have the same air of believability. In fact, we were talking to the guy who, who guided us down there. He was a guy named Adrian Warren who had done a documentary that we had seen about uh, Tapuis, and we talked to him and he said, sure, I can show you down there. Uh, he watched the film just last week and he said it really felt to him like we captured uh, captured the area, and it would not have happened had we not gone there. Oh, another amazing milestone is the fact that this film is going to be opening at the Cannes Film Festival, which I'm going to be at in two weeks. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, so I'll see you there. See you there. I know. Hey. Um, so, so to have a film like this kind of open a festival, which is kind of considered the number, you know, the biggest film festival in the world, yeah. uh, how did you find out about it, and, and you know, are you ready for the, the insanity I that don't, it's no, I don't, you know, I've never been, so I have no idea what to expect. I, I have no idea. But yeah, it's a complete honor, and you know, you, I picture Alfred Hitchcock and all these, you know, legendary filmmakers walking around there, and so it just feels like, wow, that's, it's a, it's a big honor. Um, and final question then, um, how, now that you're done with this, you know, your baby's out. Like, how do you go on to another project, or are you already working on something, or are you taking a break, or wh where does this go? Where does this uh, well, this one we just, I just finished about three weeks ago, uh, so uh, you know, I'm still in the process of talking about it and getting the word out. And, uh, but already I have kind of a, in the back of my head a sort of very foggy, vaporous idea that hopefully will take some sort of shape in the near future. <laughs>